One of the most common tasks an ethical hacker performs is password cracking. If you've spent a microsecond studying ethical hacking, you've probably cracked a password. The problem with password cracking is that it can be slow and tedious. Why can't we just run one command and have all of our tasks done at once? Why can't we automate this? Well, we can, and in this video, I'm going to show you how. With about 100 lines of Python code, we can automate our password cracking process so that we can do better things with our time. Before we get started, we're going to take a quick word from our sponsor. And as always, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you watch our channel, that probably means that you care about security. If you're a developer using open source libraries or even writing code from scratch, it's important to make sure that your code is secure. And that's where Sneak comes in. Sneak integrates into your existing tools, your IDEs, CLI, repos, and scans your code as you write it in real time. I'm not kidding. Watch this. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code with the Sneak Security extension enabled. And I'm writing this code in Python. I am writing code to log into a SQL database. And oh no, I can see that I'm getting some errors in here. So if I hover over this error, it says I have a SQL injection because unsanitized input exists. And if I come over here and actually click on this, I can show the suggestion from Sneak, which says that, yeah, it's unsanitized. But also, here's some examples of how to fix this. You can click through. There's three here. It tells us exactly what we need to do, giving us real-time examples. And we can even learn more about the vulnerability if we want to. It's really great. Let's see what happens when I fix this code. And once we do fix this, all I have to do is hit Save. And it will rescan my file. And just so you can see the fix, I came in here and added some parameterized queries. And now we are all good to go. We have saved it. And look, I've got no errors down here, no errors in my file. Now I'm not going to have SQL injection in my code. And that is the power of Sneak. So make sure your project remains secure from the start. You could try Sneak today with my code at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. Let's walk through a scenario now. Let's say that we were on an internal penetration test and we just compromised the domain controller. And what we want to do is we want to dump out the ntds.dit. And that file allows us to see all the wonderful NTLM hashes that exist on the domain. And we can do that here with an example. We just go ahead and hit enter. And we get the spit out of information here. So if we come in here, we could see that we get an administrator password hash. Perfect. We get all these hashes. But then we get some hashes I don't want, like guests and this KRB, TGT. If we come down a little bit, we get all these computer hashes that I don't want either. And so what I typically do is I come in here and I copy these first. And then maybe I get rid of some of these. So maybe I open this and I come in here and I paste. And I'll get rid of these two accounts here. I'll get rid of these. Okay, and now I've cleaned up my list. But there's more problems here. Well, first of all, all I need is the LM part of this hash. This is an NTLM hash. And these are great hashes because they do crack very fast. Well, I need to break this out to where I can grab just the end of this hash. We could do this in bash. We can come in here and say, well, I see there's a delimiter maybe of a colon. Maybe I just grab this field right here. We split that out. OK, that's possible. And then the problem is, we need this in order to crack it, right? We need just this hash here. So we take a list of these hashes and then we crack them. And if we've got a thousand of these, now we have to come back and we have to tie this hash specifically back into this account. It could become a wild mess. Let me show you how I do it now. And then we can look at how we can automate this process a lot easier than what I'm doing currently. Listen, don't judge me. I'm a former accountant. I am using Excel. All right. I come in here. I paste this into Excel. I can come in, actually just go to data and then do a delimited here with the text to columns. And if you go in here and do delimited, you can go with the colon here for other and it will go ahead and just put everything into columns like I have now. Again, the LM part of the hash is all the same. We need this NT hash right here. So we would take this. We would copy this. And then we'd go back to Kali Linux. And then maybe I'll make a hash file like hashes, let's call this 3.txt. I'll come in here and I'll paste those hashes. And then I'm going to have to come into Hashcat. And I'm going to have to run this against the hashes. 
And I'm going to have to put a word list in here, user share word list, rock you. And so I can run this and try to crack these hashes that I found. And then once I do crack them, I'll just show you because I've already cracked them. It comes out into this list like this. So I have the hash and the password, but if I have a thousand again of these, I don't know what these go to. So I just come back and I'll take these and I'll copy them again. And then I'll go back to Excel. And from within Excel, I'll have a new tab and I'll paste all my results in here, which is great. And then I'm gonna have to come in here and I'll have to do some wizardry where I do this VLOOKUP command and I have to look up this value here. And then I have to come over here and say, here's my row or my table array and the column that I want to grab the password from. And that's false because I want the exact match. And I come through and OK, and I can come in here and find all the passwords that were matched to that user. Gosh, that takes forever to do this. So this is slightly annoying. There are tools out there that can help with this, but why not just automate the whole process so that I can just run this and walk away? And that's exactly what I want to do today. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. And look, I'm a nice guy. I'm not going to keep you in suspense. This is already the tool. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm just going to hit enter on this. It's going to run secret stump. It's going to run hashcat. It's going to do all of that back end work for us. And then it's going to compile all this and actually put these users to a password. We just cat out the file that it creates here. And you can see that, hey, all of those passwords that we had in our Excel file matched to users. Bingo, right here, they are all matched up perfectly. We don't even have to worry about it. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at this code and see how it actually works. Okay, so here's our code. It is written in Python. It's around 100 lines. And we need to start off with our imports. And so for our imports, we're going to import arg parse, which is going to allow us to have arguments that you can see here. We're also going to import subprocess, which is going to allow us to spawn new processes. And also we're going to import RE, which is going to allow for regular expressions, which you're going to see here very shortly. So we're going to define our main here. And then from within main, we're going to go ahead and just start listing everything out. First things first, we need to run secret stump. So with secret stump, we need to have a set amount of arguments. We need to have a domain, a user, a password, and an IP address. And we can show that proof of concept off really quick. So here's what this looks like, secret stump. Here's our domain. Here's the user that we used. Here's the password we provided. Here's the IP address. And I'm just going to hit enter on this so we can see the output as well, because it's going to be important here in just a second. So with that, let's go back. We also are going to run Hashcat. We're going to come in here. We need to absolutely have a word list for Hashcat. So that's true. All these so far have been required. We also have some other things in Hashcat that we can run. For example, we can run rule sets. So if we want to run rule sets, I already built that in. We can also optimize this with the dash capital O. The thing about this and one caveat about this program is if you run it in a virtual machine, which it will work, it's going to try to utilize your CPU instead of your GPU. So you should run this on metal. Now I'm showing you in a virtual machine, no big deal. But if you want the most out of this, it needs to be ran on metal. So with that, we store our arguments here into an arguments variable coming down. We have our command that we're going to run. So our command we're going to run first is going to be secret stump. Here, we're just putting in all those arguments that we're providing here. And we're going to dump out what is called the ntds.dit. And here, we're just going to print that out, and execute the command. And we're going to store these results. You're actually not even going to see it get output, which is nice. And we're just going to store it into a result variable. That's what's happening here. And then we're going to do a split of the output into new lines, which is great. Then we're going to come in here, and we're going to set a few variables. We're going to have a start variable that is just set to false. We'll talk about why in just a second. We have a couple of indexes, indices, I don't know what you call them, but we have a relevant lines and empty hashes, and I'll show you why for those as well. Now, all we have to do is come in here and do a simple for loop. We just say for line and lines, and then we're going to look for certain lines. So if we come back, I said it was going to be important. If we look at this output here, you could see that this line here says, hey, using the DRSU API to get the ntds.dit, Perfect. And then once it's all done, it comes up here and it says cleaning up. So we want to know 
really what's in between those lines. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to grab all this fun stuff in between those lines. So if that line exists, we're going to go ahead and set start to true. If we are true and we eventually reach this cleaning up, well, then guess what? We're going to go ahead and break. And then we're going to get rid of the lines that we don't want. We don't want that guest account. We don't want that care BGGT account. And we don't want the computer accounts, which have the dollar sign with the colon after them right here. So we're going to just take all those out of the equation. Once they are out of the equation, we're going to go ahead and just keep our relevant lines. And then we're going to extract some data from that relevant line or from those relevant lines, I should say. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically output to two files. What we want to output is one, anything that was relevant. So anything in here that was relevant, keeping this data the same, which is going to be important for later. And then also just grabbing these hashes right here. So we just want to grab that NT hash out of the NTLM. So going back, you're going to see that that's exactly what we do. So we do a regular expression search and we try to find that. Once we do find that, we're going to go ahead and just grab that data and we're going to write to two files, the NTDS relevant hashes. That's going to be the full hashes. And then we're going to have the NTDS NT hashes, and that's just going to be the NT portion of it. So we're going to write to this file. And then basically they're going to output two different files. So if we want to take a look, we absolutely can since we've already run this before. All we have to do is cat out the NTDS and then we have the relevant hashes. Let me just go ahead and come in here. We have the NT hashes and then we have a file that was called dump complete. We don't have to worry about it, but this is what the old naming was old naming convention. So if you come in here, you can see that, yes, here we go. We've got the complete file here and then we've got the NTDS NT hashes and we have our two files. So coming through, we come in here and now we need to run hashcat. So what is our command going to look like? Well, we're going to run hashcat with a mode of zero because that's going to be our NTLM mode. And in here, we're going to supply that hashes file. And then we're also going to supply our word list. We get this from our arguments via arg parse. Now, if we have additional rules in here, for example, we want to run a rule set, it'll just append it to the end right here. Uh, if we have to optimize this or we want to optimize this, it'll also append that at the end. Once that all happens, we're going to go ahead and execute our command, which is just our hashcat command here. And then we're going to go through again, same thing. We're just going to store our output into a result here, and we're going to extract the data from this. Now this recovered match is important. Let's go run hashcat really quick and talk about why. If we run hashcat without this dash dash show, you'll see that in here, it's going to say we recovered so many hashes. This instance is going to say five out of six, which it is right here. We have zero out of six new, not a big deal, but here it's going to say, yeah, I recovered these. Perfect. Well, once we recover these, we want to know what the detail is as well. So if we come in here and we do the dash dash show, we'll be able to see those hashes right here. So we need both of those. But this is important with this recovered line because we want to know if this number here is greater than zero, then yes, we did recover a password of some sort. So we want to continue. If we did not recover a password, there's no point in going on and doing the dash dash show and trying to do all the magic behind the scenes because we didn't crack a password. So we don't need to do it. Coming back in here, we're going to actually check for that. So we're going to come in do some more regular expressions. These are not fun. ChatGPT can help you write these very easily. You come in here and you look, look, if there's a recovered match, we're going to go ahead and look, we're going to say recovered hashes, and then we're going to put that to an integer. And then we're going to say total hashes. We're going to put that to an integer. Do we actually need this? Probably not. But if we come in here, we say if recovered hashes are greater than zero, then we're going to go ahead and continue on with running that dash dash show command, which is done right here. And then we're going to store that into a variable called show result. Same concept as everything before. Then what we're going to do is load up that NTDS relevant hashes file because we're going to read from this. These are the original hashes. Remember, they are the complete hashes. They look more like this. So we want to take those. We want to kind of search through those. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to try to put a hash to a user. So we're going to search through that. 
and we're going to actually look for that and split the data out. We're also going to map those cracked hashes to users here, and we're going to do that with a very simple for loop here for line and cracked data. And then we're just going to go ahead and map that data out right here. Okay. Once that data is mapped out, we're going to go ahead and just put that to a new file. This is a domain. So whatever we supplied for our domain argument is going to be put here. And then it's just going to say cracked users.txt. We're going to write here as a file. And we're going to say, hey, for user password and cracked hashes, put the user to the password. Pretty straightforward. Coming through here now, we can say, OK, passwords are cracked. See this file. If we didn't crack any passwords, then we don't need to run most of this stuff. And we can say no passwords are cracked. Now, if we had some issue with parsing Hashcat, then we're going to have an error. We're going to split that out here, and we're just going to go ahead and kill the program off. And then we have our main run down here. So that is really it. Let's take a look at it one more time now that we know everything that we know. And so if we come in here and we just run this again, and we say, OK, I'm going to run Python test.py is what I called it. We're going to supply our domain that's mandatory, marvel.local, our user of Hawkeye, our password to password one at, our IP, which could be considered DCIP. We might rename this here to domain controller IP because we do have to query the domain controller for this. That's the domain controller IP. And then the word list that we want to provide to actually crack these passwords. So something like rock you, just using for an example. But then when we run that, it's going to run secrets dump. Perfect. It's going to dump out everything, put those two files together, and then it's going to run Hashcat. It's going to try to crack that with RockU. If it finds that any passwords were cracked, it's going to go ahead and run that show command, and then it's going to tie everything back to each other. So that way, we just have to run that. And this runs in seconds, just seconds. It doesn't take very long at all, where if I were going to do this with Excel, it's going to take a little bit of time. So this is awesome to just let this run in Go. Obviously, Rock use a very small word list comparatively. It would take some time to run through a bigger word list. But this is something that now I can just set on the machine, put my word list in, put my rule set, whatever I need to, and just walk away or do something else and just let that run. I don't have to do any mapping or anything else. And that is the power of automation. So I challenge you at the end of this video now to think about what in your life you can automate. What can you do with code? What can you learn? to go out there and automate. So I challenge you to automate something this week. Figure out what you can do to free up a little bit of time, maybe for a little bit of that relaxation or maybe to do some work, wink, wink, on other things. So that is it from this video. As always, if you liked the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. My name is Heath Adams, AKA The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.